Hey everyone, I'm out of town this week, so instead of doing Encore episodes, I thought I'd do something different. This week I'm running full Encore episodes as they were originally released, but at the end, where I normally read a review, I'll be providing an update to the episode. So make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the show. This episode was originally released on August 2nd, 2020, and it was the second podcast I ever recorded. You may notice that the sound is a bit different as I was recording in a room with hardwood floors and there was a refrigerator running just a few feet away from me. With that, enjoy the incredible story of the grandsons of President John Tyler. President John Tyler was the 10th President of the United States. He was born in 1790 and is widely considered one of the lesser presidents in American history. If you've never heard of him, don't worry, you aren't missing much. This episode isn't about him, however. This is about his two grandsons, his two grandsons who are still alive in the year 2020, 230 years after the birth of their grandfather. Learn more and try not to get a nosebleed thinking about it on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer that'll help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. This week, the money line for the Packers versus 49ers game is plus 340 Packers. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code EVERYTHING. New customers can bet just five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code EVERYTHING. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. This episode is sponsored by Newspapers.com, your passport to untold stories and hidden histories. As the largest online newspaper archive, Newspapers.com offers an incredible journey through time, with papers dating back to 1690. Imagine exploring the news, events, and everyday moments that shape the history of the world around us. Newspapers.com puts over 900 million pages at your fingertips, offering a front row seat to the past. With papers from the U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, and beyond, Newspapers.com lets you walk the streets of history, whether it's London during the Blitz, New York during Prohibition, or Sydney during the construction of the Harbor Bridge. For listeners of this episode, Newspapers.com is extending a special offer. Use code EVERYTHINGEVERYWHERE and enjoy a 20% discount on a subscription. That's EVERYTHINGEVERYWHERE at Newspapers.com. It's the perfect way to unlock the world of history. John Tyler isn't the best-known U.S. president. In fact, he's best known as being the second half of the phrase Tippy Canoe and Tyler II, which most American students learn in history class. And I should note that most people who have heard that phrase have no clue what it means or who it's referencing. His other claim to fame is being the first vice president ever to ascend to the presidency after the death of a president. John Tyler was the vice president under William Henry Harrison, who died 31 days after becoming president. In fact, when it happened, people weren't even really sure if he could become president. It had never happened before, and people weren't totally sure what was supposed to happen when a president died. Many people assumed he would just be the acting president, not the actual president of the United States. He was often referred to as his accidency, and many people would only refer to him as the acting president. But as I said, this is not an episode about John Tyler. This is an episode about John Tyler's grandchildren and how two of them are still alive today. This could all be explained in four simple words. Old men, young wives. However, if I left it at that, it would make for a pretty boring podcast. To get into details, John Tyler was a very fecund man. He had 15 children in total, which is the most of any U.S. president. His first wife was Letita Christian, who was the same age as Tyler. They married in 1813, and together they had eight children. However, she died of a stroke in 1842 while she was first lady. 
In 1844, at the age of 54, Tyler married Julia Gardner, who was 30 years younger than her. It was, in fact, the first sitting president ever to be married while in office. Together, they had seven children. One of those children was Lion Gardner Tyler, who was born in 1853 when President Tyler was 63 years old. Lion Tyler followed in the family tradition of having children late in life. His first wife died in 1921 when he was 68. He then took a second wife, Sue Ruffin, who was 35 years his junior. With Sue, he had three children, two of whom lived into adulthood. Lion Gardner Tyler Jr., who was born in 1924 when he was 71, and Harrison Ruffin Tyler, who was born when he was 75, in 1928. Both of those men are still alive today at the ages of 96 and 92, respectively. So, just to recap, a man born in 1790 has a child at the age of 63, who then has children in his 70s, and those children live into their 90s. That is how you can get three generations which span the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries. If you're curious, and I was, and want to take this one generation further, President Tyler's father, John Tyler Sr., the great-grandfather of the two men in question, was 44 when President Tyler was born. He was born in 1743, 277 years ago, over a quarter millennium ago. To put this into perspective, it is not uncommon for children to know their great-grandparents today. Families with extremely long generations, such as the Tylers, are uncommon, but not unheard of. One contemporary example of this would be the current king of Saudi Arabia, King Salman, who is currently 84 years old. His father was the founder of modern Saudi Arabia, King Abdulaziz, also known as Ibn Saud. Ibn Saud was 60 years old when Salman was born. Ibn Saud was born in the year 1875, during the reign of Queen Victoria and during the Ulysses S. Grant administration in the United States. That was before Thomas Edison had ever filed the patent on the light bulb. And just to cap this discussion off of really old fathers, I had to find out who was the oldest man on record ever to have a child. And that distinction is held by a man in southern India named Ramjit Raghav, who had a son in 2010 at the ripe old age of 94, and then followed it up two years later by having another son at the age of 96. After the second child, Mr. Raghav said he wasn't going to have any more children. I'm guessing that you can see why I've never run this episode as an encore before. The way I do podcasts has significantly changed over the last 1,300 episodes. The big update to this episode is that President Tyler's oldest grandson, Lion Gardner Tyler Jr., passed away in October 2020 at the age of 95. 175 years after his grandfather died and 230 years after his grandfather's birth. And just to put this into perspective, in the course of my travels, I once met a woman who was 48 years old and was a great-grandmother. As of this recording, his brother and the last surviving grandson of President Tyler, Harrison Ruffin Tyler, is still alive at the age of 95. However, reports are he's not doing well. He's currently living in a nursing home and has been suffering from severe dementia for several years. These people who have lived very long lives and are connected to major figures have been called by some time wormholes. For example, the U.S. Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes served on the Supreme Court in the 19th century. He personally shook hands with President John Quincy Adams and President John F. Kennedy. He lived to the age of 93 and told stories his mother told him about watching Continental soldiers during the Revolutionary War. And he passed away in 1935. There are probably some people alive today who met Oliver Wendell Holmes when they were children, which means that they're only one person removed from his mother who was witness to the Revolutionary War. Another case involved a man named Samuel Seymour, who in 1956 appeared on the television game show I've Got a Secret. His secret is that he was the last surviving witness to the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. He witnessed the event when he was five years old, and he lived to the age of 96. 
This topic of people who are time wormholes is one that's always fascinated me and one that I might do a full episode on sometime in the future.